In all creatures great and small, there resides the spirit of athletic competition. From the heights of Mount Animal Olympus, the flame begins its journey through the four corners of the animal kingdom, bringing with it drama, joy, and sorrow, the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. Farther, faster, furrier, the motto of the competing continents of these first games. And now, live via satellite, Animal Olympics. The five rings of the paw print symbol of world peace through animal athletics. Presented by ZOO, the network that brings out the beast in sports. Henry Hummel, your anchor turtle. From ZOO Control, you're looking at Animal Olympic Island, setting for these first Animal Summer Games. Now here's a look at some of the events they'll be bringing you. In the marathon, for the first time, a woman stands a chance of beating a man. I'm Barbara Wobblers, and I'll be bringing you the story. This girl has won every major competition on her wise to stardom. Can Dory Tonell take home the gold? We'll soon find out. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keen Hexor. You know, in gymnastics this year, it looks like crowd pleaser Tatiana Tushenko is going to go all the way. And I've got Bob sledding action with Europe's famous Katamari Brothers. In swimming, Dean Wilson, a young Californian, is one with the water. Hi, I'm Brenda Springer, and I'll have all the exciting action from Animal Olympic Pool. In slalom and downhill, Kurt Wuchner is everyone's favorite. I'm Rugs Turk Kell, and I'll be bringing you me as well as the story of an exciting young track star, Bolt Jenkins. I am Millie, and I bring you the down and dirty play of the New York Rats for you, yes? The Parade of Nations has begun. The Olympic torchbearer will be here any second at Fort Prince Stadium, where a grazing room-only crowd awaits the opening of these games. Now, he's sweeping past former animal greats in the corridor of champions. The seemingly endless waiting is almost over for these athletes. For some, the realization of a golden dream. For others, the pits. Now, with an opening statement, the mayor of Animal Olympic Island. Uh, let, let the fur fly. Our opening event is the most demanding marathon ever run. How one gets ready for a 14-day race is beyond me. Perhaps our own Barbara Warblers at the starting line has the answer. Barbara? Hi, I'm Barbara Warblers. What is it about the marathon that generates such excitement? That it's the original Olympic event? I don't know. Just look at these wags. No, these are not my wags. And lucky for me. They belong to Europe's celebrated René Fromage, whose long string of victories make him the favorite in this first animal Olympic marathon. I am in training, always. In my life, I have no time for women. 
It is all run, run, run. Because of this, I am chased. Long distance running is determination, endurance, the wall. Viva la victory! Between Winnet and the gold runs the shape we form of Kit Mumbo. The hopes of women around the world run with Kit. The way to beat Renee is to take a quick lead and break his concentration. The aspirations of these two great continents rest on the waves of these two determined champions. We're about to start. Let's set the field. From Europe, Sofia Bolgiawewi, representing Central America, the rascal Pepe Robanoza. Out of Boulder, Colorado, Terry Hornsby. And of course, the favorites, Wene and Kip. You're over to here, old man. Who is she kidding? And there's the start. The runners are moving out of Paw Prince Stadium. A classic struggle between superpowers. Thank you, Barbara. COO's Animal Olympic coverage continues with the precision and beauty of international gymnastics. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keen Hacksaw with one of North America's favorite minks, a great gymnast, Coralie Perrier, who's got a zoo on you report on the international sweetheart of gymnastics, Tatiana Tushenko. Tatiana, you began training at an early age. Da, where I'm from, everyone starts early, but I work harder. Even on vacation I work, after school I work, weekends I work. Tatiana, surely a young person like yourself has other interests. Da. I collect trophies, my own, of course. Tatiana toured North America last year, making friends and maintaining her nose to the grindstone image. Technique, as well as how her program relates to the music, is what the judges are going to be looking for. Looks like Eurasia's gonna draw first gold here. Let's take a look at it again on the replay. There's something I've never seen. Keen, what the crowd is seeing is 150 years of Eurasian ballet tradition. Wrapped up in a neat little package that could melt Siberia. Joshenko's <laughs> coach, Bruno Ursikov, is prepared for the worst from these judges. And a perfect 10 for Tatjana Tushenko. I'm not surprised. And neither is Tatjana. All righty. Hey, here's an interesting story on the vault. You're looking at Ilsa Blintz, Europe's big hope for a gold medal. Ilsa hails from Stuttgart, where she's the exercise director at a camp for obese kids. Ilsa's doing a double Sakahura, a Baksumi somersault, and a handspring flyaway in the laid out position. <laughs> she moved a tonnage well, but Tatyana's got nothing to worry about. 4.5! Ew wee! That's gonna hurt! <laughs> 4.5. Is that her score or the reading on the Richter scale? Up next, we got Bruce Kwakimoto, an Asian gymnast who's, well, he's the kind of guy who stands out in any crowd. Anybody see a red pun? Bruce finds himself through the martial arts discipline of no can do, which he says helps him in gymnastics because it hardens the body and turns the mind inward. 
Okay, let's pick up on Bruce's routine. There's a quick series of thrusts and parries. A classic Zenkumachi pose. Oh, there's a great roundhouse kick called Mawashi Ufesi. Now we got the last few exercises in this unique gymnastic demonstration. There's a threatening Seiyu Punky. And there's a series of rapid-fire fancy tumbles, and a humble but proud Bruce Kwakimoto salutes the crowd and tries to pick up valuable brownie points from the judges. Okay, a storm cloud of controversy is swirling around this Eurasian. She's the grand dame of the uneven bars, Ludmila Stepanyatova. Her work in the circus with her animal Olympic weightlifting husband raises the specter of professionalism in these games. Hey, Yankee, got a peanut? Ludmilla takes full advantage of her weight and works these bars without mercy. She goes to a back hip circle, a free hip with a full turn, another back hip circle. Look out! That'll cost a couple of attempts. Swing to a handstand. She's getting set for a double flyaway dismount. She's got big trouble, Keen. She's losing it. She's got to be disappointed, Keen. This kind of maneuver may be perfectly appropriate in the circus, but it's going to cost her points here. Gorley, where did she go wrong? Right there, Keen. A little too strong, a little too heavy. The result? Orbital velocity. There you see the heavy price these athletes pay for their mistakes. With Stepanyatova out of it, a gold medal for Tatyana Tushenko. So, Tatyana's formula, early training from a supportive family, and a government willing to subsidize a potential superstar from birth, yields gold. Looking at the men, we've got Bruce Kwakamoto about to finish his routine on the rings. Now he gets ready for his big dismount. Look at that height! Whoa, beautiful landing, and a little something extra for the crowd. Bruce needs a 9.4 for a gold medal. And that 9.5 means a gold medal for the Asian Bruce Kwakamoto. Exciting gymnastic competition here at Paw Print Stadium. Everything we'd hoped it would be. For Corley Perrier, I'm Keen Hacksaw. Back to ZO Control and Henry Hummel. This is ZOO, the network that brings out the beast in sports. Let's go to the ZOO Copter and Burnt Woody for the big picture and a tour of Animal Olympic Island. Animal Olympic Island, built on the lost continent of Atlantis. No expense was spared in creating a complete athletic habitat. Hello, everybody. I'm Bird Woody. Let's go sightseeing, don't we? In the distance, the five rings of Pawpert Stadium. Below, the 3,500-kilometer, 14-day marathon course. A challenge for any runner. Let's check in now with my favorite bird, Barbara Warblers. We're at about the 50-kilometer mark. It's way too early to make any predictions, but things are going pretty much as expected for Wene Fromage. He's out to an easy weed with his long, fluid stride. In a very disappointing fifth position is Kit Mambo. Wait a minute, she's making a move. She passes third and fourth position Hornsby and Wabanoza. She's putting away Sophia Bojowowi. Kachi's a hop up yield second place. And now maybe we'll see the waste we expected. That's it for now, back to you, Bert. You know, these high-strung athletes competing in this international pressure cooker need a way to blow off steam. There's my good friend hammer thrower, you fat Tig, keeping his massive arms in shape on the dogleg 18th hole. After an afternoon on the lakes, it's time to head home to the privacy and ultra-modern gracious living here at Olympic Towers. <laughs> this is wonderful. Not so hot, don't forget I'm not in my shell now. Head chef Forrest King must provide for all tastes. Whether you eat like a bird, and like a quarter wormer, and a side of flies Provençal. Or a horse. I have a big mess. Why don't you hold oats there? This fuels the athletes, but the energy to run Animal Olympic Island with its sophisticated communications facilities is generated both naturally from the ocean depths and through the utilization of sophisticated technology. Well, we hope you enjoyed this little tour. Now to Barbara Warmer. Could it have been?
have been only a few years ago that athletes were content to wear gray sweatsuits? Well, with modern athletic wear, everyone can feel like a gold medal winner both on and off the field. Hi, everyone. I'm Barbara Warburg. Recognize this great look? These are the sports fashions of Enrico Pucci, favored by these athletes for their elegance, durability, and flexibility. Here's one of the real superstars of these games. Dory Turnell keeps warm down to 40 below in one of Pucci's two-piece icebreakers. Dory cuts a great figure on and off the ice. Let's get ready for all the beauty and grace of Olympic figure skating by welcoming one of the all-time great skating stars and expert commentators, Art Antica. Thanks, Barbara. We got some great skaters to show you, like this Eurasian player, Olga Kaginsky and Nikita Krolinov, who recently tied the knot. The Kwolinoffs have been performing together for years and appear to skate as one. Really a joy to watch. A beauty for a spectacular program. A great moment for the Kwawanoffs. Our congratulations to them. But this animal Olympic skating competition would be incomplete without the presence of Dory Turnell. Remember this emotional scene when she won the Junior World Championships? The public can't get enough of this girl. And here's our manager, Robert Pigwood. She's a great property. Dory has a certain uh, childlike quality that gives her wide audience appeal. I'm gonna make a fortune. Uh, I mean, Dory's gonna be a wealthy girl when this is all over with. She's been wowing audiences coast to coast touring with the ice parades, but the skate blade cuts both ways. Sometimes I long for the simplicity of my younger days. <sighs> On the ice now, Dory Turnell. for this great champion. Double axle, beautiful height. Watch this combination now. Beautiful coming out of that. A performance of this caliber cannot be denied. And it's a gold medal for Dory Turnell. For Art Handica, I'm Barbara Wobbles. If you don't think this guy is the most exciting thing in track today, you are mistaken. Bolt Jenkins, this is Zoo on You. He started life as a handbag, was told he'd never walk again. He was born in a very bad part of town, where the sun never shone and the people went round with their heads hung open. I grew up, you know, in a sewer, you know. It was wet, you know, like and dark, you know. He was born to live. It was hard, you know, just, just staying alive. Ironically, it was a ZOO broadcast of Boris Amphibiansky's record-shattering high jump that made this story possible. Thanks, Stan. 
standing between both in a gold medal is his idol, Boris and Fibianski. I invite you now to witness this climactic moment in sports history. And Fibianski, jumping first, has never looked better. Those frogs' legs are well-seasoned, ready to jump into the frying pan that is international competition. The bar is set at what would be a new world's record. Can you believe they're trying to jump 77 and three-quarter feet? He's making his approach. He looks confident. He plants his foot. He's up and... Uh-oh. He's got big trouble. It could be back to the pond for this great champion. Look at the intense concentration of this young competitor. It all comes down to this. He's done it! Paul Jenkins has done it! A new world record! Just look at the expression on that boy's face. Let's see it again! To clear this world record high took every ounce of strength and coordination in this young Gator's body. But yet another challenge faces this tenacious athlete. They've all missed it. But Bolt Jenkins has one attempt left to pole vault 180 feet to another new world record. Good plant. The snap's incredible. He swings up well. He's done it again. Bolt Jenkins has literally this day jumped his way to start. Hi, like, you know, I'm Bo Jenkins, and I locked a lot of miles and downed a lot of Tulsa gecko flakes on my way to a gold medal. Cause, cause they gave me like an extra boost, you know, when I needed it. Were the years of hard work worth it? I hope you aspiring young athletes take a good look at Bo Jenkins. You decide. There's gonna be a celebration We can see our ships coming Though we met some competition on the way It was tiring, it was testing It was almost never ending But we all pulled through and won the accolade Now that we've made it
46 seconds. Not bad for Fatso. Well, it's dawn here. It's serene. But in a few hours, the speed merchants of these games are going to explode down this track in an awesome display of raw power that is the 100-meter dash. Okay, we're live. In lane one, the favorite, the African Kip Ngogo. In lane two, the mysterious Eurasian Yuri Trotsky. In third position, gold medal winner Bolt Jenkins. Rounding out the field in this 100-meter dash, the diminutive European Cosmo Hopper. The continents are looking for a quick gold medal here. It all happens in a couple of seconds. Kip needs to mine some African gold. And here with a call to the race is former speedster Jackie Fulett. Jackie? Thank you, Keen. The tension's been building it all day, and I know we're going to see a great race. The Gogo on the inside is really cooling it. I hope he doesn't hand grenade his engine. That would be a terrible tragedy. It's only a matter of seconds now, Keen. And there's the light. Look at the acceleration of those top fuelers as they scream up the line. The Gogo's over there. But there he goes. He's got to catch Bolt Jenkins. Bolt Jenkins and Kip Nogogo in a photo finish. Let's get them both over here while we wait for the results. And the judges give it to Bolt Jenkins in the record-breaking time of 1.06 seconds. Bolt, congratulations on another Cracker Jack performance. I can't accept this gold medal. I mean, he was better than me. Yeah, Kip, you, you should get this. I mean, I mean, I'm Jackie Fulett. Now to another important race, and Barbara Wadler. We're at the 1,000 kilometer mark in this marathon, when A and Kid have left the pack far behind, setting a bone wet wing pace. For four grueling days, they've matched each other stride for stride. I wonder what's running through their minds. Viva la victory, viva la victory, viva la victory. He is great, but I know I can beat him. It looks as if Wene Fromage may have finally met his match. As they go into their fourth night of running, neither one apparently acknowledging the other's existence. How long can she keep this up? How long can he keep it up? This guy is an egomaniac, but he's kind of cute. Another night of agony for these runners. But as night falls on Animal Olympic Island, other animals take a breather from the intense competition by heading over to the in spot, Noah's Ark Disco.
and soccer expert Melee. We got some exciting clips from yesterday's match. Rolf Schmecker, captain of the European All-Stars. I remember Orvitz, the words of my first coach. Great hair. Hope you win. Wiz Rizzo, leader of the hard-hitting New York Rats. I remember what my coach said. Ring his bell. I don't like the wind out of his sail. But he went too far in this pivotal play. There's a whistle. We're going to see a penalty shot by Captain Schmecker in this scoreless game. Save! No, a score as it gets past the Rats' goalie. Let's pick up the action in today's game. The South American Llamas versus the undefeated Dogs. The score is one to one, out of bounds, Llamas ball. A steal by Frank Wiener. A real opportunity deep in Lama territory. Quick pass to Hans Wolf. He fires off to the left wing. Centering pass to Schmecker. Bicycle shot. Score! As the time runs out, the Europeans take it two to one. I said you cannot make a mistake against a great team like this. Otherwise, they kill you. A much-deserved gold medal for these Europeans. Now to Henry Amo. Now, let's focus our attention on the all-important Marathon and Barbara Vorblas. Kip Mumbo and Wene are at the 2,000 kilometer mark. The friction between these two great personalities is heating up to the flesh point. One of them must make a move. Me and the course, there is nothing else but Kip Mumbo. I have to beat Wene, even though he is a dreamboat. Don't throw it all away, Wene. fulfillment of an athlete's dream. And speaking of the fulfillment of a dream, here's former Miss Pedigree North America, Brenda Springer. I'm standing in front of the slalom course with former all Scandinavian ski champion and now film star Bjorn Freeborg. Bjorn is starring in Cries and Winnie's, Ingmar Bergman's upcoming picture. Can we see the clip? I remember as a little bee by the seaside. It was a game and I knew I had won. 
Well, Bjorn, that's two careers on ice. Brenda, earlier today, we saw the young North American, Jimmy Ribbit. You see him hook a tip. Most skiers would be down by now, but Ribbit is still thinking ahead to the next game. <laughs> Looks like North America is going to have to wait a little longer for a gold medal. The big story this year in skiing is Kurt Wachner with all of Europe expecting him to bring home the gold. Let's get to know this hot dog alpine guy. Skiing free on the top of the world is my whole life. I can ski where no dog has ever skied before. No slope is beyond my reach. Having the right equipment helps. Up here, I feel I am where I belong. But I will go any place that challenges my scheme. This maneuver really ticked off the people who run the Animal Trade Center. For life, the pressure's really on this guy as he sights himself up. Strong start. He's the only one left who stands a chance of beating the leading time. He's got his back on every ball. He's really pushing through these last few games. 51.23, he's on it! Well, not quite. He's still got the downhill. Let's look at it again. This is the gate for Yemi Rib. It hooked his tip. New problem for Werfner. Now to Henry Hamel. Let me take you on a gondola tour over picturesque Squawk Valley, nestled in the shadow of Mount Mammoth. On your left, Animal King Dome, setting for brutal head-on hockey competition. There's the Admiral Bird Hotel. There is Zero Control, where I am. That is the world's only loop-to-loop -loop bobsled run. Now we enter famous Squawk Valley Hot Springs. Wait a minute, hold the phone. I've just been handed a bulletin. Kurt Wuffner, the European ski star, is reported missing. He was last seen climbing treacherous Pikes Peak moments ago, training for the downhill. Even as I speak to you, the ski patrol is mounting an intensive search, but they are being hampered by a sudden blinding snowstorm. As soon as we get more information, we will give you an update on this traumatic development. But now to Keen Hacksaw at the bobsled run. Well, the possibility of serious injury looks at every bone crunching turn. But our Drillinger, you've risked it all in this dangerous sport of bobsledding. What drives these men? Well, they're all quite bonkers, Keen. Okay, tight lip discipline makes this European team successful. Captain by distinguished commander Lance Quiller. Let's pick him up coming into the extremely dangerous loop the loop. Nice and clean through the loop. Oh dear, there's a bad tap. Hold on, mate. This could be it. I think I can bring her in. Whoa, beautiful landing. Bernard, I'm sure we got some young future bobsledders watching. How can they avoid this sort of thing? Take up golf instead, Keith. Fine tingling bobsled action continues with Europe's Calamari Brothers. We got a study in contrasts here. An almost casual approach by these four brothers whose teamwork developed running the family business. With Commander Quiller's hope stash, this team has a good shot at the goal. Well, you're really going to enjoy watching these boys. Not only are they extremely gifted athletes, but they love their sport. And they're not afraid to show it. Mamma mia! Ah! Ah! Nice line through the turn. Oop, little skid, that's going to cost them. Oh, but their midway time looks good. Not on! Ah! Flying through this last S turn. Out of it nicely. The final straightaway. Clean run! Let's do it again. 
That time will give them the lead. Then looking at it again, hey, this proves the old point that uh, those who are truly great just seem to enjoy their work just a little bit more than the rest of us. Now back to Henry. Nothing new to report as the search for Wuffner continues. More Animal Olympic coverage coming up. This present. I've got to find shelter. There's no coming back from this mountain. The search for ski star Kurt Wuffner, missing and presumed lost on Pike's Peak, continues. They'll keep you up to date. If you don't think you're about to witness a gargantuan battle between behemoths here, you are mistaken. As the Eurasian Shorthorns take on the Kodiaks from North America, this game of hockey is one of the fastest and most dangerous of sports. Indeed, some have charged it's no longer a game played in pursuit of athletic excellence, but rather as an exercise in destruction. One of the architects behind this demolition derby on ice is the coach of the Kodiaks, Bear McLean. Men, this is the face of the enemy. He is vicious. He is ruthless. He will stop at nothing. Now, you all know the game plan. Light him for the face-off. After you take his face off, kick him in the shins. Censoring pass to Eggs. Eggs over easy. Pedal shoots. Six spectators injured. Derek checks the goalie. He likes what he sees. He boards the goalie. They fight. The goalie moves out. But first, the fluke ices the puck. He licks the spoon. Shoot. Score. Now, let's go get him. It's time for the opening face-off in this battle of fire and ice. Face-off to Chips. Passes off to the right wing. North Americans control. A steal. This hard-checking game is taking its time. Face-off to Derek. Timeout while they clear the ice. All quiet. 
The question this reporter asks is how long can Coach McLean afford to keep this all-star line off the ice? Ah! Oh, no! They got Harry! I'll get them for this. Those crazy axes. The flu gets past the tough shot on defense. Black shot. Score! As time runs out, North America takes it in the closing seconds, avoiding sudden death overtime. It's getting darker, Coach. Darker. I think I'm going to that big penalty box in the sky. I did it for Harry. We won, didn't we, Coach? Talk to me, Gee! Talk to me! Hockey, a team sport. But behind it, the selfless personal dedication and sacrifice of the individual. With me, the coaches of the two weeding marathon runners, Coach Mamo Yuwuwu. Can Kit Mumbo keep up with Renee's whistling pace? Renee's pace? This is Kit Mumbo's race. She is setting the pace. I have this marathon planned from beginning to end. Coach Tawus Watwak, what's your reaction? I don't have to defend René Fromage. When this marathon is over, he will still be the greatest runner in the world. Incidentally, I am calling for blood tests after this race. I have heard rumors of catnip. How dare you? Oh, yeah? Ooh, ooh, get your hands off me. Now to Take Slender it. Springer. Let's take a look at the swinging West Coast life of Dean Wilson. Zoo on you. Hey, I'm high life, man. The West is the best. It's all here for sure. But you gotta have wheels out here, man. Wendy really digs my van, because I got diamond pleat seats. And listen to that sound system. We're both vegetarians. Me and my board have been through a lot. And sometimes after a day of surfing, I like to relax with the guys. And other times I seek to find myself in the calm beauty of nature. We're back at poolside with former swimming great Mark Spritz, ready for the start of the 100-meter freestyle. Mark, we've just seen the favorite, but what can we expect from the rest of the field? Well, Brenda, it's a strong cross-section of the fastest swimmers in the aquatic world. In lane one, it's a European art honkwer. Look for him to be riding high on the water. In lane two, Sergi Wedjnikov, the Eurasian. He's been unflappable in world competition. In lane three, the European Giancarlo Calamari. He's always tough. Earlier this week, Wednesnikov and Calamari faced off during the brutal water polo competition won by the Europeans. But the man they're all here to beat, perhaps one of the greatest natural athletes of all time, Dean Wilson is in lane four. The way I see it, the only thing between Dean and the gold is the 190 tons of oh no no no, the great Asian champion. That sets the field for the 100 meter freestyle down and back. Brenda? Mark, how do you think Dean will swim this race? He's got to take an early lead and stay in the unbroken water to win. It's a good start. Nono's out to an early lead. He's got a half a body length on Dean. Dean didn't take it out as fast as I thought he would, but he's loose, he's swimming well. He got a good turn, but it wasn't enough. This bow wave is gonna take him out. No! Dean's gonna use it to take him in! Where is he? It's Dean! With a new world's record, Nono takes second, followed by Wednesnikov! There's that look of gold! Congratulations on your victory, Dean. Here it is on the monitor. Will, man, this wave had my name written all over it, so I said, go for it, man. So, Dean, you knew you had it all the way in this one. For sure. We're back at poolside with Mark Spritz for one of the more dramatic and beautiful events, the 100-meter dive. Diving from this height requires great concentration and control, not to mention strong legs just to get to the board. 
This event requires the strength of weightlifting and the grace of gymnastics is exemplified by Wilson and this Acapulco cliff diver, Primo Cabeza. arch in the swan. Good extension head to toe and he's reaching for the water a little over but a beautiful dive for Primo Cabeza. And the judges thought so too. Look at those marks. They're going to be tough to beat. But this crowd expects perfection and there's the man that can give it to them. It's been said before but it bears repeating when this boy dives, he goes off into his own world. top that. The Dean Wilson story, a natural athlete who's made the most of his God-given talent. This is the first Animal Olympics, but the history of animal athletics goes back thousands of years. Let's have a look at what remains from those days here at the Animal Archives. The early discus throwing form was quite primitive. Today's young athletes really get a sense of history viewing these exhibits. This reminds me of the old joke, how much does a Grecian earn, but you've probably heard it. This piece of pottery is important as it shows the earliest evidence of animal athletics. Paleontologists believe this skeleton represents the earliest known example of animal weightlifting. This frozen mammoth runner, believed to be one million years old, was found recently in the cradle of animal civilization. And here, if I may borrow an old showbiz expression, is a really big shoe, part of this exhibit of athletic footwear through the centuries. Stone Age, Iron Age, Dark Ages, Baroque Age, Industrial Age, and Space Age. These are the types of shoes worn by our Marasanas. As we go into the downhill competition without Kurt Wuffner, the world can only ponder the fate of this great athlete. big story here is the disappearance of Kurt Wachner, which puts this boar, Marcel Persson, in an excellent position to win the premier event of these games, the downhill. 
This crash and burn just last summer almost spelled the end to the brilliant skiing career of Marcel Persaud. He was pronounced dead! But through the intensive efforts of a dedicated team of scientists and doctors, he was put back together designed with one thing in mind. Speed! He missed it at the free jump coming off of that mold. He's lost it. This looks bad. A terrible spill. He's gonna feel this in the morning. Let's check out the damage on the replay. He told me earlier he felt really good about this race. Maybe they can use him for spare parts. Well, that about wraps it up here. An anticlimactic finish. The winner in the mediocre time of 1.5802, the Scandinavian... Wait a minute, Bjorn. Who's that in the starting gate? It's Kurt Wolfner. And here he comes. Let's see if his battle with the elements has broken his spirit. He's really pouring it on. He seems to have a new spirit and confidence in his abilities we've never seen before. He's got to hoop his speed through this final straight away. Look at the time! The crowd's jumping up and down. Look again at the strong finish of Kurt Wolfner, who almost missed this race. Well, you see a confident Wolfner rooting nothing back, really sailing, keeping a tight took through the finish. Kurt, can you come over here and talk with us? We saw a new Kurt Wolfner this afternoon. Where were you? I'm not sure, really. I left a strange, wonderful mountain paradise because I had to win this race. I know I'll never stop climbing till I find Dog Gorilla. Barbara Warblers is on the marathon course with all the latest on this crucial event. Well, one of these winners has to make a move here at the three-quarter mark. Physically, they seem to be perfectly matched. Emotionally, it's anybody's guess. They speak of the world of physical exhaustion, but it is paper mache compared to the barrier that keeps me from kid. It's the only way, my love. Soon we'll be together. I'll run forever if we can run together. I can never run again without you. Excuse me, Barbara, but looking at the scoreboard here, the implications are worldwide. Is this someone's twisted idea of strategy? Is this international sabotage? Or is it just fooling around? Regardless, as rumors begin to circulate, we're getting reports of turmoil at Paw Prince Stadium and around the world. We'll keep you up to date. With me, one of the great fighters of this or any other time, Joey Gungalong. Champ, shortly you'll be facing the toughest challenge of your long and I might add controversial fighting career. The Eurasian, Janos Brustekel. Champ, take a look at the monitor and feel free, as I'm sure you do, to comment. That face is almost as ugly as yours, Ruggs. He's too ugly to be champ. True enough.
but I've seen that vicious left hook of his and champ. You better stop fooling around and take this challenge seriously. Why you talk about taking him seriously? I did everything I could get ready for this fight. Up and down on the hardwood floors, didn't eat no meat. It lays in your stomach, makes you fat and lazy and heavy. Every time my career, you're on my back. I trained hard for this Bus Meckle, Bus Beckle, Bus Deckle. I can't even pronounce his name. That's why I'm gonna whip him so bad, he's gonna look like his last name sounds. I'm the greatest animal champion of all time. Thank you, champ. Round one of this gold medal bout coming up after this fast-breaking basketball storm. The great rivalry between the two supercontinents is personified by these two athletes. Dr. Admiral Jones, captain of the undefeated North American team, and Pavel Shotsky, center for the top contender Eurasian. Okay, tie score. We're down the last few seconds. Shotsky moves the ball. It's considerable bump down court. It's all by Meadow Pile Argus. Behind the back to Jackson. Over to the doctor. It's one-on-one, -on -one, a fake. He's gonna slam it. Two points, that's the game. The North Americans take it. Another gold medal for the North Americans. Checking on the marathon, it's incomprehensible. Kit and Renee are still picking up the pace as they approach the home stretch, hand in hand. The face tells the story. Janos Brustekel has suffered a crushing defeat at the hands of an unrelenting Joey Gongolon. Janos, this won't be easy, but I urge you to take a look at this replay and learn from your mistakes. You left your midsection wide open here, Janos. There's the snap. He splits your uprights for the extra point. And then he puts you away for good. Janos, you lost miserably. You let down your coach. You let down your country. You let down your mother. You're a bum steer. But most importantly, you let down yourself. And now you can let me down. There are two great winners in first place, but only one gold medal. Yes, and it belongs to Rene. It's kids. I'll take that. Give me that. Oh, for you. Give me that thing. Get your hands off me. I will take that middle. Give me, give me that. When you see the precision teamwork, the great individual effort, and the fast, exciting pace, where well, you will understand why volleyball is quickly becoming one of the most popular sports in the world. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keen Hacksaw, and we got a surf and turf grudge match here as the Asian stuffers take on the European wings in a fight for a gold medal. This flock is known for their flashy but smooth offense. Six hens working as one giant chicken. <whistles> Team captain Mandy Eggers serves. The pass. It's on, look out! It's on! The spike. Good recovery. Sucks it. Side out, lobster. <laughs> we got a great contrast in style here between the extroverted play of these hens and the hard nosed, methodical style of this team of crustaceans. Serving for the stuffers, Izo Donoroto. Chicken returns. Oh, the opening game jitters are gone now as both teams rally. The wings crossing patterns and fooling these lobsters yet. Quick set. Strong spike. She got it. Looks like things are getting serious between Kit and Renee. Bruce, what do you think it all means? Thank you, Bruce. Too bad we don't know what that means. Dean, what about these crazy kids? Hey, man. They're going all the way. Let's go to Mele and Brenda Springer for some not a struggle between heavyweights from weightlifting hippodrome. The beautiful people have gathered here this evening for the glamour and allure of international weightlifting. 
before the night is through, the first Mr. Heavyweight will be crowned. I know you're also very anxious, so let me the two beautiful finalists, yes? Here is Europe's powerhouse, Wilhelm Sven. Well, he keeps busy in the off-season designing and making his own clothes. And the favorite, Ivan Disavinsky. Ivan and his wife, Ludmilla Stepanyatova, both work in the circus. In the off-season, they grow beef. In addition to the gold medal, our winner will receive dinner for two at the posh Top of the Silo restaurant, a gift certificate from the fabulous Beagle catalog, plus an all-expenses-paid vacation for two at Lion Safari Country. And two tickets to every home game of the Bruins, Cardinals, Orioles, Lions, Tigers, Broncos, and Dolphins. Our finalists are ready. Each of our contestants will attempt a clean and press of this... Oh, excuse me. I mean a clean and jerk. A clean and press is only for the laundry. Wilhelm told me earlier in the dressing room that the privilege of competing in this competition was meaningless and that all he wanted to do was win. Ah! Oh, too bad. May we have our next contestant, please? All the competitors love Ivan. Earlier, he was voted Mr. Conviviality. Here comes Mr. Heavyweight. And here to crown the first Mr. Heavyweight winner at the Animal Olympics is reigning champion, Bert Sparks. There he is. Mr. Heavyweight, Ivan Disavinsky. This is Brenda Springer, live from Weightlifting Hippodrome. Count Maurice Bordeaux, cunning, cruel, and dangerous. Duke Chartis, scrawny, slight, and sacrificial. He's the only one left. Bordeaux has knocked off everybody else. Get out, you little fool! Ha ha ha! You stupid rodent! No one beats me! The pompous hog takes home the gold! Now back to Z-O-O -O and hit... Stop! Wait a minute! This time you have gone too far, Bordeaux! You could kiss her. You'll never fence again. You've never fenced before. Make it a tooth for a tooth or an eye for an eye. thought he'd take home the gold medal. But the swirling steel wielded by a vengeful Contessa is too much for a blimp like Bordeaux. And the gold medal goes to Eurasia. Now to Henry Hummel. From the beginning, COO has provided you with an intimate look at Samarasan. We knew it would be the pivotal event. And now, with the continents locked into a five-way tie, Kit and Renee, hand in hand, hold the athletic destinies of the world. We feel like a forever. 
I had it all planned. Kit Mumbo track shoes, Kit Mumbo dolls, Kit Mumbo vitamins, a lifetime of training, and she throws it all away. For what? Huh? What about René, coach? For René to steal the heart of a naive young thing, yes. For René to fall for a pair of pretty legs, yes. But for René to give up the gold for love, no, never. That marathon ends the competition here on Animal Olympic Island. Keen Hacksaw has this wrap-up. Well, they all fought for the gold, but only the great ones take it home. We saw Tatyana Tushenko's perfect performance. We saw great sportsmanship personified by Bolt Jenkins. But of course, the big story. The unprecedented romantic encounter between first place winner Kit Mambo and first place winner Rene Fromage. Back to you, Henry. You know, bringing you these games required the precision teamwork of herds of dedicated animals working behind the scenes. Our isolated camera animal, Sal Terry. Good job, Sal. Another of our roving camera animals, Jim Pansy. In the video truck, Randy Gravatelli. Our statistician, Manny Fingers. Our sound rabbit, Woody Hutchinson on the big ears. Good reproduction, Woody. Our tape editor, Gary Mazars. Tight Gary. Countless producers and technicians. And our tireless executive producer, Don Osterizer. I can't believe it's all over. For everyone on the COO team, I'm Henry Hubble. Goodbye, and good luck to all you future gold medal winners. It was tiring, it was testing, it was almost never ending, but we all go through and won the accolade. Yeah.